Welcome back to the show. All right, so in case you didn't know, Monday is International Day of Happiness, which has been celebrated by over 160 countries since 2013. But what happens if you just aren't feeling it this year? Here with everything that you need to know uh, about how to cultivate the feelings of sweet, sweet happiness in our own lives uh, is the perfect person, and you look amazing, uh, nice and green, here for uh, St. Patty's Day, happiness researcher, Jillian Mandich, everybody. <laughs> She is. Yeah. Happy to be here. <laughs> okay, listen, we said this off the top Monday, International Day of Happiness. Can you take us back to why this day was created in the first place? Yes, yeah, so the United Nations actually started this day to work towards global happiness and well-being. So the day is to really celebrate and encourage inclusion, diversity, and to highlight the importance of happiness, whether it be in government, whether it be in organizations, or in individuals all around the world. Love it. I love that. Uh, you seem like a very happy, lovely person. Um, <laughs> But I think this, are you happy all the time? Like, is that is that actually a thing? You know, does, does trying to be happy 24 seven set us up to fail or is that a realistic goal? Yeah, so in terms of healthy psychological functioning, the research is very clear that it is impossible to be happy all the time. Okay, good, good, thank so you. So I get asked that a lot, I am not happy all the time. And I also don't wish to be, and I don't yeah. wish for you to be or you to be or family or friends or any of you in the audience because in terms of the sort of full and complete picture of being a human, feeling all sorts of emotions is important. Yeah. And so when we think about, you know, those types times when we're not feeling happy, knowing that, hey, we don't have to be happy all the time, it gives us grace and self-compassion to allow us to be humans who feel other things other than happiness. Okay, I love that you said that. Okay, so it's not easy for everybody to wake up in a great mood. Um, so what are some of the common obstacles to happiness and, and how do we try to overcome those. Yeah, you know, so often, if we're not happy right now, we think, I will be happy when, fill in the blanks, yes, right? Yep. When I get married, when I get divorced, when I win the lottery, whatever it is. And the reality is, like, happiness is not a destination, right? We don't arrive at happiness one mm. day and then we're good. It's a practice and it's a habit that's built over time. And when we think about what constitutes a happy life, it's not those big, shiny moments that we sometimes think about. It's really about looking for areas of opportunity throughout our day to create small bursts of happiness. Because while I mean small in terms of like time, the impact is not small. And when you, the cumulative effect of all of them is really what adds up to a happy life. Mm -hmm. Is there any research that shows us uh, like if there's a link actually between what makes us happy and what brings real happiness, real genuine happiness? Yeah, there is. And what's really interesting is that there is often a gap between what we think makes us happy okay. and what actually makes us happy. So some common things that we sometimes might tell ourselves is, you know, I'll be happy when I land my dream job. Yeah. Yeah. And the reality is, one, we're evolving creatures as humans. If we think of what our dream job was when we were 20 and what it is when we're 40 and maybe when we're 80, it's changing. Yes. Yeah. And then the other thing is if we create this idea in our mind of a dream job and we start comparing our reality now to this artificially constructed construct, then it can start to make us feel worse or not happy with what we actually have right now. And another big one um, is, you know, people sometimes think that I'll be happy when they put a ring on it and we live happily ever after, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. And what we see from research is that after sort of the wedding and all of that has died down, married couples tend to go back to their happiness level before their engagement. So it's ah. not the case that marriage equals a happy life. What it is is that a happy marriage equals a happy life. And so if we're not feeling happy and we get married, chances are that's not going to be our okay. golden ticket okay. to happiness. I think you need to put that on a t-shirt yeah, right. and then sell it. <laughs> right? I think there's a lot of couples yeah, that could be saved yeah. a lot of heartache <laughs> with that one. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that we all know over the last several years, and if you're counting, that would be the last three years of our lives in this pandemic. It's been really hard to find happiness mm -hmm. for a lot of people. It's been really, really tough. And I know we throw around the word resilience. You know, we're gonna get stronger because of this. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe that's so for some people, but not for everybody. So mm -hmm. listen, life has thrown us a three-year curveball. How do we find happiness in the midst of what has been, for many, a devastating time? Yeah, you know, it, it's so true. And I, one of the things to know about happiness is that a happy life doesn't mean that hard or difficult things don't happen. It's how we respond to them. Mm -hmm. And when we think about these curveballs, when they initially hit, usually what we see is that our emotions spike, our anxiety or something like that. And so one of the things we can do in that moment when we feel that sort of coming up is to actually label our emotions, to identify how we are feeling. It sounds really simple, and yet the impact can be quite profound. We call it emotional labeling. And what it does is it starts to maybe interrupt our 
thought pattern if we're spiraling. Um, it can also actually decrease our physiological response because when we label how we're feeling, it almost like helps to loosen the grip of that emotion okay. on us. And then when we do that, because we sort of start to reduce how we're feeling a little bit, we can start to think about different things and how we want to navigate it going forward. Okay, so the you know we've talked about the the hows, and since I have you here, can you help us all? And <laughs> with the or we talked about the whys. How about the hows? Like, how do I become happier? Not on International Day of Happiness, but every single day. And how do I cultivate that in my day to day? Mm. Tell me the secret, <laughs> please. <laughs> there's no secret to happiness, okay. but there's a science to it. And when we look to the research, some of the things that we can do is one, understand like I talked about that happiness is not a destination. It's a practice. It's okay. a habit. It's a byproduct of our behaviors. And so one of the things that we can do is stopping to smell the roses, which wow. in scientific literature, we call it savoring. And this is yeah. one of those things, I love it because we can start to appreciate the good things that we have in our life. So those small that. moments, right? Yeah. Like a quiet morning with a coffee, or even just sometimes like feeling the sun on your face. What savoring means is pausing and sort of increasing our attention, our awareness to it. So it can increase our positive feelings. Yeah. And that can have a really significant impact on our happiness. You know what I do? I do that. So when I take my dog for a walk in the morning, we have a, an open field near our place and I'll stand and when I can find that one little sliver of sun, I put it on my face mm. and I breathe deeply yeah. and then I say, today is going to be a great day. Oh, I love that. And even if it doesn't end up being a great day, feels good in the moment, yeah. but I do feel like I'm putting an intention yeah. out there. You are putting, mm. manifesting that good day. This is honestly better than my yeah. antidepressants. This is and, great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need Mel, to hang you out with you know how more. you brought up your yeah. dog? Yes. Well, I have a surprise for all of you. Another thing that can really boost our happiness Stop. is pets and animals. And I brought my little guy here oh. today. Oh. 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 Who is this, Jillian? Yeah. Jocko, he's walking out with Jocko. Jocko, Jocko. Uh, can we just talk about Jocko's great fashion, Jillian? I know he's wearing his Canada pooch, neon green for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, uh, Jocko, Bye, Jocko, Jocko. Jocko. licking mum's legs. He's yeah. licking my hand yeah. cream. Come here, go Jocko. Hi, let's show the world your beautiful face. Oh, come Does on. Oh, come on, Joe. Look, don't we just feel better instantly? Look. We really do. Look so at him. Research shows good. that even petting an animal can increase um, neurotransmitters that are associated oh. with happiness, like oh. serotonin, <laughs> dopamine. <laughs> And there was actually a study done um, on Wall Street with investment bankers. And what they found was I that investment go. bankers that adopted a dog or a cat saw a decrease in their blood pressure more than when they were taking their medication. Wow. So there is a lot of therapeutic benefits to yeah. petting a dog. And if you don't have access to a dog, then even watching cute videos and pictures and seeing that can help to oh, give you? us a jolt of joy. Oh my gosh, go volunteer at your local shelter yeah, to take yeah. dogs for a walk. <laughs> Well, I, listen, this has just Jocko. been, look, uh, can I tell you something? Jocko just caught himself on screen, and he likes what he's doing. <laughs> oh! Look at hey, him, Jocko. look at him. Look at him. <laughs> this has brought us a lot of joy yeah, and happiness, thank Jillian. Thank, thank you. you. Jocko, good job, buddy. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.